Good morning, everyone. I'm back after my day off. It's time to start another full and fun week streaming here on DSP Gaming. And so on today's show, of course, we will have all your favorite segments, including Phil's Day Off, uh, DSP News, and more. We've got Jasper Kitty in the house. A new week is in full swing. So I hope that you are ready for fun here on today's episode of the Level 1 Podcast. Indeed. Jasper is definitely going to be a part of the show today, as you can see. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the show. Today is Thursday, the 18th of July, 2024, uh, next to last week of July. So, summer progressing by speedily, I would say. And uh, good summer so far with all the stuff that we've been juggling and, and enjoying together here. Uh, looking forward to more, which actually we're starting some new stuff this week which is exciting to always try out some new things, see how they work, if they stick. We're going to be bringing back some stuff that uh, was successful previously this year, but we need to wrap it up. Um, so it should be a good one, I feel. I hope that you're all doing well. I hope that you all had a good day yesterday when I was not here. Um, and uh, maybe you got caught up on all of my stuff, you know, Elden Ring. We are literally in the final segment of the DLC. Just got to beat the final boss, who's very tough. So I'm trying various different efforts on that. Uh, Street Fighter VI made some great progress last week with Bison actually hitting my highest rank points ever and continuing that climb today. Uh, <clears throat> chill games like Riven Remake, where we are near the end now. Probably one more stream when we wrap it up. And also Stardew Valley continuing on now, starting with the fall season and all the new farming, uh, fishing, and fun that happens along with that. So a very full week of stuff to get caught up on, and that's just on this channel. Keep in mind that we had our usual clip show, DSP versus the Internet, over on DSP Reacts. And also, brand new stuff on DSP Throwback. This is exciting. The Dante's Inferno playthrough has begun. Part 1 went live a couple days ago, and it was an hour-long premiere. And now, Part 2 has gone live this morning. <laughs> Silly nut. He's rubbing my hand when I'm trying to do stuff. Uh, part 2 went live this morning. That's a half an hour. And I have something very, very interesting to say about this, okay? Now, we're only 90 minutes into Dante's Inferno, the remastered playthrough over on DSP Throwback, okay? What that means is we're taking the original playthrough, we run it through an upscaler, so now it runs at 60 frames per second. We're running it through an HD filter, so now it actually looks 1440p, although not really, but it definitely looks better than the original blurry camera footage. Better audio. <clears throat> And 30-minute parts instead of 10-minute parts, each part individually numbered, thumbnailed, and titled. So the playthrough is very different than all my other playthroughs. Oh, by the way, the playthrough doesn't exist on YouTube. It got shut down years ago because YouTube felt that the playthrough was too risque for YouTube. Too much nudity and gore. They couldn't take it. Well, today, you actually can have that playthrough on YouTube, but certain parts are going to get demonetized. For example, part one got demonetized, and there's nothing I can do about that. But I hope you'll check out check it out. It's going live every other day now. And part two went live last night, and, and just here's my initial feedback. The game is actually really good. <clears throat> so what it is is it's like a combination of Devil May Cry and God of War, only it has this religious mechanic to it where you're very much going through <clears throat> the levels of hell with Dante I mean, you, the first thing you do is you fight death. I'm not kidding. You fight the Grim Reaper. <laughs> How cool is that? <clears throat> you get all these crazy supernatural powers. You're basically going to hell. You're on the ship to hell, Charon ship. Then you end up fighting the king. I forget his name. I think he starts with an M. But the king who, who uh, judges everyone when they arrive in limbo at the gates of hell. Like, are you going to go to heaven or hell? Where are you going? Right? So you fight him. Like, basically, it was really, really neat. Uh, I'm watching and naming these parts. I'm like, this game is good. Like, this game is seriously good. It's just as good as, like, God of War 3 <clears throat> or one of those late-game Devil May Cry games. And I'm like, man, I wish this had not, this playthrough had not been shut down. Um, 
you know, in 2010 by YouTube's ridiculous criteria back then. I mean, I wasn't monetizing videos back then anyway. You couldn't. You couldn't monetize gameplay videos in 2010. So what they had an issue with, I have no idea. But so far, 90 minutes in, it's really good. I think that you'll actually enjoy it if you haven't ever seen this game yet. And, and certainly you haven't seen my playthrough of it because it doesn't exist. Uh, check it out over on the DSP Throwback channel, okay? So that's going to be going live like every other day. The only bummer, I only beat three levels. I think the first level may be Greed. I think the second level is Lust. I think the third level is like Wrath. But then I stopped playing it because YouTube just wouldn't accept the parts. So I said, well, I'm not going to keep playing it if I literally cannot upload it anywhere and no one can see it. What's the point? So, by the way, the game's also apparently on Game Pass. So right now, if you have Game Pass, you could play it yourself if you watch my videos of it and you're like, oh, it actually looks good. You can enjoy it, okay? So I hope you'll give it a look. Um, <clears throat> that's what's been going on over there new. So, so much going on and to get caught up on. Um, we're back. So let's actually now, let's talk a little bit about what happened on Tuesday, all right? On Tuesday was my first major stream trying to tackle the final boss of the Shadow of the Erdtree DLC. And there's good news <clears throat> and some not really bad news, but news. Um... The good news is I'm pretty much good to go on the first half of this boss fight. Like, I'm not really having that much issue. Every once in a while, I do a mistimed dodge and it screws me over. But I've pretty much got the first half of the final boss fight down. The problem is the second half. Because in the second half, the game puts so many visual effects on the screen that you can't really see the boss attacks, which is kind of stupid. Like, if the boss is going to beat you, have it beat you because it's really really tough you know what i'm saying like oh look a, a bunch of crazy combo strategies and you know special attacks that blow you away and maybe for example in the melania fight the reason she was so hard is because she actually gained health back if you made a mistake and she hit you she gets a bunch of chunk of, of health back with this particular boss i really feel like the only reason that the second half is hard is because there's so many visual effects on the screen of like magic holy magic all over the place you can't see anything so, like, is he attacking? Is he not? Should I be dodging now? Should I not? I can't see. You keep blocking my field of view with your stupid effects. And, listen, I get it. It's the last boss fight in all of Elden Ring, so let it be tough. But I honestly wish it was tough more for the actual fight than the fact that they're trying to overload your senses and block your, your visual style. Like, I, I've already said it. I'll say it again. Here's what the boss fight is like. Cool, I'm really getting the boss. This is cool. Wait, wait, oh, wait, what's going on? I can't see anything. Oh, crap, I took the hit. All right, let me try to recover from that. All right, here we go. I'm getting it. I'm gonna... Wait, I can't. What's going on again? I can't see Oh, I'm dead. <clears throat> That's the boss fight. Gee, thanks, FromSoft. I, I hate to say it. I don't think there's anything in the Shadow of the Erdtree DLC that's as challenging as the main game. I just don't believe that. I feel like they kind of followed their own little tropes and things and delved a little bit too deep into them. Like, the, there's two hard bosses in this DLC. The first time you face the Dancing Lion, and that's because of the camera, and this boss, and that's because of the visual effects. It's not the bosses that are tough. That's stupid. The bosses should be what's tough. And I'm not, I, don't, I actually don't believe that it's the boss. It's, it's, if I could see, I'd have no problems with this, you know? So, that being said, um, I didn't beat him on Tuesday. I tried a bunch. First, I tried the shield counter attack build. It works fine and gets me through the first phase. The problem is it takes too long. The guard countering to block so much and then counter attack, it takes ages to finally get a hit in. So it's like, I want to learn the second phase, but it takes me so long to get to it. I make mistakes, you know? You want to get through that first phase fast, so now you can focus on that second phase and really learn it. You don't want to be sitting there for 5 to 10 minutes each time to get to the second phase just to make a mistake and die in two seconds because you don't know what's going to happen in the second phase. You know what I mean? So I definitely feel like um, I will get it eventually. We tried different things. We tried the hammer build. That gets me through the first phase fast, but then I need to learn the second phase. Then we tried something that people recommended. They say do a bleed build. I wasted 45 minutes doing it just to find out I can't do the bleed build as people thought because I don't have two hammers to put the bleed effect on. Or maybe I do, but then I have to go grind and get more souls or something. I still have to look into it when we play it again on uh, Saturday, okay? Anyway, I didn't get it done, but it's not like I'm crushed or upset. I honestly didn't feel crushed or upset at the end of that stream. If anything, 
I was like, all right, whatever. I'm kind of used to this. After the Melania fight, it's not that big of a deal. We'll get him eventually. It's just going to take a little bit more time. So we're going to have another stream of it on Saturday, okay? And then uh, Tuesday night was fun. It was Riven Remake. And we got to the uh, essentially the toughest boss in the game. Or toughest boss. It is really the boss because it's a, it's a puzzle. This game doesn't have any enemies, but it has crazy puzzles. And there was an insane puzzle in this game that required you to have prerequisite knowledge from like eight different places in the game. Just let me explain. So you needed to know the color of each island as corresponded from a light puzzle earlier in the game that you didn't know was a light puzzle because the game didn't tell you. You needed to know the symbol of each island in the game. You needed to know, <clears throat> excuse me, the shape and positioning of each item in the game, again, from another previous puzzle, but you didn't know you would ever need that knowledge again. You needed to know the exact positioning of certain orbs in a grid puzzle from previously in the game, even though you never knew you would need to know that again. You needed to know a specific frequency balance from something that never explained itself as part of a puzzle earlier in the game and you easily could have overlooked, okay? <clears throat> I think that covers it, but the point I'm making here is all the things I just discu discussed were in, like, different parts. Like, two or three of them were in a room that's a lab. One of them is in an underground area where you're lighting up lights underwater. Two of them are on a grid puzzle that's above. So it's like, if you didn't take pictures and if you didn't know exactly what you were looking for throughout the entirety of the game, the game actually expects you to leave the puzzle room and go back and backtrack. And it could take upwards of more than an hour to go all around the map and read and take the pictures and everything you need to get the data for this one puzzle. <clears throat> now, I've played every Resident Evil. I've played nearly every Silent Hill. I have played many cryptic games that require you to backtrack to get puzzle pieces and keys and things. Never in my life have I seen a game that made you want to do that. So, the thing is, apparently, yeah, this is also representative of the real game from 1997, but it was just kind of like, it blew me, blew my mind. I was like, they really thought that that was, like, meaningful use of your time, but you know what? That's probably padding of the game. Keep in mind, games back then in 97, especially, you know, these point-and-click adventures with full-motion video in them, they weren't very long games. This is probably a way to make the game much lengthier. Um, anyway, we got it done, and now we're continuing on when we play again. It's going to be fun to see what happens next because we're in a whole new area of the game now. Everyone says one more stream, I'll probably beat it. So, so that's what we did on Tuesday. Yesterday was my day off. So ladies and gentlemen, I guess it's time for that weekly segment that we all like to call Phil's Day Off. Of course, he's the best stories on YouTube. What else would they be? So yesterday, I did not stream. Yesterday, I had many things to do. Many, many things to do. Oh, boy. I can't tell you most of them because most of them are personal things. But we had a lot of appointments and things that we had to do during the day. So to be quite frank, I wish that the day had been a better day to spend more time with my wife and have more meaningful time. But instead, it was a lot of running around doing a lot of stuff that was not very fun. It also didn't help that yesterday it was very humid as well as hot. So not only was it in the 80s, but it was like 60, 70 degree, uh, percent humidity. So it was very stuffy and sticky everywhere we went. Not very pleasant, okay? What I'll try to do is focus on some of the pleasantries. Um, we did order a poke bowl to eat for, for uh, food. And we like poke bowls. Those who don't know what a poke bowl is, if you have uh, sushi, right? Typically, sushi is going to have some kind of a seafood component. Sometimes it's cooked. Sometimes it's not. You could have tempura shrimp. You could have raw tuna, raw salmon crab, other things, and usually you have a rice component, and then usually there's veggies or other things combined with it, and then usually a sauce or a flavoring, and then they wrap it in seaweed usually. You know, this, this is what usually composes sushi. So what a poke bowl essentially is, is they're deconstructing sushi to make what ingredients would be in sushi into a big bowl. You get a bed of rice, white rice, and then inside of there you can pick your proteins. So you get any of those kind of, you know, sushi-like proteins that you would like, and then you get all kinds of add-ons and, and fixings, like, you know, uh, little tempura crumblies or some green onion or red onion or some pickled uh, ginger or wasabi or, you know, I'm just, I'm, there's like a million things you could put in this. Cucumber. I like cucumber in it. So you do all that and then they will put like rice on, or a, a, a sauce on it and then you just eat it out of the bowl. 
So my wife and I ordered big, big poke bowls yesterday. I got uh, salmon. What was it? Some kind of tuna. Oh, I think it's like a special tuna. It's not just plain tuna, but they actually like marinate it in this sauce. And it makes it taste very uh, salty, but also savory. As opposed to just the plain tuna, it has fishy flavor, but other flavors as well. And I like that. Yeah, so I got tuna and salmon and a whole bunch of like, oh, roasted corn and veggies and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and again, with a nice sauce on top. I think they call it like a shoyu sauce or something like that, uh, which is kind of su a sweet sauce and savory as well. And my wife got like, uh, I think she got similar. I don't know if she gets the salmon. I know she definitely gets the tuna. She didn't get the salmon, though. Or maybe she did. But we also got um, scoops of crab salad, and they have different kinds of crab salad you can get. We get spicy and regular crab salad. For those who don't know, crab salad is usually not real crab. It's made from whitefish. It's very inexpensive. You could buy it at the store. You could buy a big thing of crab salad for like four or five bucks. It's like pounds of it because it's real cheap. But it tastes very similar to crab. It's imitation crab salad. So that, they just scoop that right on top, too. So the thing about Poke Bowls is you get a lot of protein, usually. If they don't skimp, you get a lot of protein. But you can also get a lot of veggies. You get your, your grains and your carbs from the rice. It's basically all the food groups you need, just no dairy. So it's calories, it's protein, it's vitamins. It's just no dairy. Um, and we really like the Poke Bowls because it's healthier for you. The catch is they're kind of expensive because you're getting a lot of fish and stuff in there, they're usually more expensive than other stuff. So yeah, it was a pricier meal, but it was delicious. And we really enjoyed that for our food yesterday. Um, <clears throat> uh, what else? Um, so over the course of the day, we did a few things. We just kind of relaxed for a while. We did a little bit of house cleaning. We spent some time together, some meaningful time, which was nice to do that. But it was kind of uncomfortable because the house was kind of stuffy. Like, even with all three air conditioners blasting, it was still 80 degrees downstairs and humid. And we're like, what we're realizing is we have a new setup this year with the way we're doing our air conditioners. We have our big air conditioner all the way down in the bedroom. And then we have the two smaller air conditioners in each of the rooms in this end of the hallway. So they blow the cold air down the hallway. Then the other big air conditioner in the bedroom blows the air there. And it's supposed to push it down the hallway stairs. We have a fan, an oscillating fan standing in front of the bedroom door so it blows all the cold air downstairs which is what we're, the goal is you know hot air go up cold air go down but as i was standing right over here in the hallway yesterday i realized we need a fan right here because what's happening is the cold air is building up in these two rooms and it goes to the hallway and it just kind of sits there. It's not properly going down the hallway to combine with the air from the bedroom and go downstairs. If we had an oscillating fan in the hallway right here, it would catch the air from both rooms and push it down the hallway. So we're going to look to probably get another fan. I don't know if we're going to get it this year or not at this rate. I mean, we're already halfway into the summer. Um, but that would be like perfect. Someone said get a swamp cooler. You know what a swamp cooler is? A swamp cooler is a cooler that makes water evaporate and go into the air. So you get cooled because you're getting like or, uh, condensation on your body. You're actually getting like moisture on your body. You can't do that in a house with stuff in it. That's meant to be like outside in a barn or outdoor party. You can't have that inside. That'll destroy all the electronics. That'll fucking soak everything. A swamp cooler inside of a regular house. Are you crazy? <laughs> Damn. Anyway, um, so we did have fun and we did spend some time hanging out together. We watched a few shows. We watched a, a few episodes of House Hunters, which we just do because it's funny to watch people from all around the country complain about things in homes. Like your budget's like a million dollars. You're looking at three homes that are priced between like 850 to $1.1 million. And you're nitpicking little things like, oh, I don't like this door. So fucking replace it. You're rich. <laughs> you know? Anyway, we also watched a, a bunch of BattleBots. And uh, BattleBots was great. BattleBots was really fun. Um, and uh, we relaxed and we had a good time together, basically. So nothing too crazy, right? Not a crazy day or anything like that outside of the fact that 
the whole first half of the day. We were running all around, doing a million errands out in the heat. Wasn't very comfortable. Uh, Jasper Kitty was relaxing with us for the second half of the day as well, which was nice. So, yeah. So, Phil's day off. Nothing too major, anything like that. Nothing too crazy. Okay? Okay. So, that was Phil's day off. But now, let's talk about today. <laughs> okay? So, I wake up. Well, first of all, just so everybody knows, um, as I've told you, right? My schedule has been all over the place recently. My day off has been shifting around. My daily schedules have been shifting around. Not to say my streams have changed. My streams have not changed, right? But everything else going on in my life, basically, behind the scenes, it's been kind of hectic and stressful. A lot of stuff being shuffled, changed, um, as a result of many different things going on, personal and private. Um, so, this morning, things are a little different than, than a usual morning. And Kat is getting up earlier, all right? And so she's, she's, like, getting ready. She's in the shower and stuff. And I'm still in bed and relaxing. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm napping in a little bit more. And, uh, excuse me. So I'm napping a little more before I have to get up. Because I, I can't get in the shower until Kat's done in the shower. Anyway, um, so waiting, and, you know, I basically go back to sleep for, like, a half an hour. And then finally, it's time for me to get up. And I sit up and I'm like, okay, uh, you know, time for a shower. So I take my shower. Everything's fine. I get out of the shower. I walk into the bedroom and Jasper Kitty has vomited all over the bed. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, and it's a big hairball, too. It's a big Big hairball. You could tell this one's probably been built up for a while. And I'm like, oh, man. And, you know, Kat is gone at this point. She's out of the house. Like, well, here we go. My day begins. So I stripped the bed. I got out the bed. And it was so gross. It went through the sheets into the bed. Uh, what do they call it? The mattress uh, pad thing? What do they call it? Because you put it over your mattress to protect it from things like this. I think it's called a mattress pad, isn't it? So, yeah, it went through the sheets into that. But I was like, thankfully, we had that. Because if we didn't, it would have actually went right into the mattress. But it didn't. It protected it. I was like, thank God we have that. So, yuck. Had to, first of all, of course, I had to clean up the, the gross slop and toss all that into the wash. And in fact, now that I'm telling you this, within about five minutes, I need to go downstairs and see if the wash is done so I can toss all that into the dryer. All right? So let me finish telling this little initial story <clears throat> of what we're doing today. And then I'll run downstairs to check on that. Um, mattress protector, you call it there, Casanova? Yeah, it's nice. It's so nice that they have that. Because can you imagine if something like this? I mean, the mattress would have been stained permanently. You can't clean the mattress from that, you know? So I'm so happy that we had that on there to prevent that from happening. That would have been really bad. Um, so yeah, so I had to do that. And then uh, I finished up, you know, getting dressed and ready for the day and running around the house doing chores and errands in the morning. Had my breakfast burrito that my wife made a few days ago. She made a big batch of burritos for me for the morning for breakfast so i just nuke it because it's frozen so i nuke it and then i have my coffee and my burrito while i give jasper kitty his morning treat and get stuff uh, ready downstairs around the house for the day checking news you know news stories for today's show and stuff like that um and so today what are we doing first stream today here it is street fighter 6 again with m bison um on the victrix joystick which i really enjoyed using on monday it was really fun and the, the stick's great i did great i can't wait to play more I need to stick to my game, though. I, I forget stuff. Like, for example, when I was going to play on Monday, my game was two critical changes. When I drive rush, I'm going to try to drive rush mostly with jab. If you hit with jab, you can go right into medium punch standing or crouching. And from there, you can either decide if you want to do like a EX scissor kick or if you want to do a uh, the hand move so it leads to mines. And I was doing that consistently pretty much. The thing I forgot is his standing medium kick is incredibly good. Like, it's a counter poke. You could poke, win a poking war from mid-screen with that. A lot of people like who like to poke you a lot, you could just keep kicking them with medium kick. So I have to remember that today. I started doing that a couple matches, and I completely forgot about it. So that's one of the things i got to try to remember. But outside of that, hey, my gameplay was getting solid and better. So uh, I'm looking forward to today, although I didn't watch any videos last night. I was exhausted after a long day, so I didn't really sit around watching Street Fighter before I went to sleep. Um, so Street Fighter 6 today. Hopefully we do well. The climb hopefully continues. You know, every time we've been playing, I gain a little bit more ranking points. 
So hopefully by the end of today's stream, we'll have even more ranking points. We'll see. Um, tonight on the late stream, it is Stardew Valley Chill. So that should be fun. And then tomorrow, it's going to be a day stream of a brand new game. Kamitsugami, Path of the Goddess on Game Pass. I really don't know what the game is. I guess it's supposed to be a combination of strategy and action and other stuff. But really, the best way to find out is to play it tomorrow. It's a new game on Game Pass. We might as well give it a look, see if it's any good. And if it is, we keep playing it. If we play it for a stream and I don't like it, you don't like it, whatever, we don't ever have to play it again. But it's an interesting experiment of trying out a new game because it's on Game Pass, so that should be neat. Okay? Um, tomorrow night is Friday Night Fights. And then Saturday, the day stream will be the next stream of Elden Ring trying to finish the DLC. And then Saturday night is Riven Remake, and we might finish Riven. So we might actually finish two games on Saturday, depending on how stuff goes. Now, also, FYI, this week, it's uh, a possibility I will be doing a Street Fighter VI lobby with Brian. Uh, you know, top tier rated from Twitch. Uh, I know it's been weeks coming. Basically, since Bison came out, I haven't even talked about doing anything with Brian. Uh, I spoke with him over my day off, and it looks like we're going to try to to do it sometime this week. Um, I'll confirm 100% when I lock it in, but it may even be tomorrow night. All right, but I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver to you guys. Uh, if we do do the co-op uh, lobby, then obviously we will have voice communication. Discord now they actually put it on PS5, which is like good because the way it was working earlier. <laughs> I had to, to do it through, like, the phone or through PC and then have the call carry over to PS5, which is really stupid. It was a really complicated way to do it. Um, now, supposedly, I could just do it right through the PS5, although I don't know where the app is. I actually have no clue where the app is on there. I have to look for it, I guess. Maybe it's in a menu. I have to find it. Um, but, yeah, they apparently improved it over the last month, so now I just do it right from there. I mean, why? If, you're, if you want to do a voice call on your PS5, why would you have to start it on a different device? It doesn't even make sense. Right? So. I will, uh, I'll let you know 100% when it's locked in. Right now, like I said, tentatively, possibly tomorrow night, but not 100%, but maybe. And we'll see. Okay? Cool. All right. So, bear with me for one second. I like to go downstairs and check on those bed sheets and bed mattress pad that are in the wash and toss them in the dryer, and then I'll be right back. And hence, this is the problem of trying to do a million things at once. The stupid bedding keeps saying uneven load in the washer. So because of that, the washer keeps airing out and freezing. So I reposition, I pull them all out soaking wet, blah, 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 toss them back in. And I think it's still saying uneven load, but it started again. So I'm going to go down in about another 15 minutes and check it again. So everyone here live, can you remind me in 15 minutes around 12.05 p.m. Pacific time to go down and check on it again? Because if it's frozen again, then there's nothing I can do about it. I just keep pulling it out, trying to separate it, put it back in until the wash will finish. Yeah, I mean, it's so frustrating. But when my wife does this, she basically has to sit in front of it, right? Paying attention to it constantly for like an hour and a half, two hours until finally it'll finish washing. And there's nothing you could do about it. It's not overloaded because it wasn't even full. It's uneven load. This is what's so dumb about modern washing machines of course it's uneven it's a ball of bedding once it's wet it goes to one side because you know what do you think would happen so why can't we design a washer that's okay with that and can handle it instead of expecting the user to keep pulling the fucking clothes out right separate them and toss them back in so it's an even load that's the dumbest fucking thing <laughs> so i gotta keep doing it like every 15 minutes i gotta go down there and see if it finished or not Anyway, um, all right, so today, or we already know what kind of is going on all this week with the schedule, correct? I think what we'll do now, let's jump in to a little segment that we like to call DSP News, starring Jasper Kitty. There's nothing wrong with the washer. The washer has literally done that since day one. <laughs> if you don't understand what uneven load is, you don't know how to wash clothes. Okay. Um, you probably have never washed them in your life, by the way. All right, so. Some news going on. First of all, now this is exciting news for me anyway, and maybe for you. As you know, this year we have an upcoming Marvel vs. Capcom fighting collection, Arcade Classics, that will be coming out, featuring all of the Versus games, plus 
the Punisher arcade game, which is kind of an odd thing to put to put in there. I almost feel like they have nothing else to put it in, so they're just tossing it. It has nothing to do with the Versus games. So I'm excited for it. When it comes out, I'm definitely going to check it out on uh, PC and go from there. I, I hope it plays on my PC. That'd be excellent. Then I could use my new Victrix joystick, play with the best version. No, Hopefully no input delay, no frame drops, nothing. It'd be great, right? Um, So <clears throat> this is cool, and I'm excited for this, obviously. Um, Now, why am I bringing this up today? Because yesterday, the ESRB rated it T for Teen. And when the ESRB has rated a game, it means it's done. It means it's 100% done and ready to be sold. So the thing was, a lot of people were speculating this thing wouldn't be out until like late fall. Oh no, it's ready to be sold right now. And a lot of the times, especially when a digital game like this gets rated by the ESRB, it means it's about to drop. Well, guess what's this weekend, guys? Evo. The biggest, well, used to be, not anymore. One of the biggest fighting game championship tournaments in the United States when typically there's a lot of announcements made. And considering the fact that Sony has a big hand in Evo, meaning they own it and run it. Um, and by the way, this co collection is a Sony and, uh, well, it's not on Xbox. Let's put it that way. A lot of people are now speculating. Excuse me. A lot of people are now speculating that this will come out maybe this weekend, that there may be an announcement and a shadow drop this weekend, all right, which would be amazing. If it comes out this weekend, I would be excited as hell. I would get it and play it. I mean, I would change my schedule to play this collection because I'm very excited to play the Classic Versus games. They're part of my life's blood of fighting game history. I mean, I grew up playing every single one of them in arcades. I played in tournaments. So a lot of people are very much thinking and of the mentality that the Marvel vs. Capcom fighting game collection will drop this weekend during EVO, and then we'll be able to play it right away, right? I guess we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, if it does come out this weekend, I will attempt to play it on PC and go from there, okay? So hopefully it does come out this weekend. We'll see, okay? So that's one great big piece of news that I'll be following. So yes, there is potential that my schedule will change this week, okay? Now, we have a follow-up to an announcement from last week. Last week, Nintendo had announced they're apparently making some kind of a survival horror game following someone called the Smiling Man. His name is Emio. It's a guy with, like, a bag, a paper bag on his head that's, like, a smiley face. But they're saying it was, like, a horror game that would be exclusive to the Switch, and everyone's like, that's rare. And it's very rare when you would see a horror game, like, you know, exclusive to a Nintendo console like that. So a lot of people were speculating what this game would be. Well, now more information has come out. It's called uh, Emio, the Smiling Man Famicom Detective Club, and it launches on August 29th. Now, you might say, what is Famicom Detective Club? And that's a valid question, because there has been not, there's not been a new game in this series called Famicom Detection Club since 30 years. So yeah, the last time there was a new game, it was, I think, 1994 was the last one. So what are they? I don't even know. Like, I'd have to, like, research this to find out what kind of games these are. Um, But, I mean, if it's something interesting, uh, maybe we would play it. I don't know if we would play it as a new release, only because that same, like, week, we got Black Myth Wukong, we got Star Wars Outlaws, and we have another one, too. We have, like, three major things all going on at once. So I don't know if we would actually play it then. But I would definitely be interested in eventually uh, checking it out um, when it, you know, if people are interested in it and if it ends up being a good survival horror game. So let's keep our eyes on this one. Emio, the Smiling Man Famicom Detective Club comes out the end of August. You guys let me know what you think, because I don't know what Famicom Detective Club is. Um, so I don't even know what to say about it. See, Mr. iGamer says, I'm disappointed I wanted an actual horror game. What do you mean? It's not a horror game? That's what I mean. I don't understand. I don't know what Famicom Detective Club is. I wasn't playing those games in 1994 because there was no such thing as a Famicom in the United States. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. Um, Here's a very interesting one that I don't really understand. Sega has taken legal action 
against an individual who they are saying was performing slander and extreme acts of harassment against a Sega employee on social media. Hmm. <clears throat> Sega was given disclosure of this particular person's identity by a court and they requested damages for their actions. They were then, this person was then ordered to delete all insulting remarks and refrain from similar acts in the future. Sega is also warning it will take this kind of action against other people. Let me fully elaborate on the story. So according to the legal announcement, Sega took action against an individual who continuously made excessive defamatory and insulting remarks about one of its employees via social media. The company was granted disclosure of the perpetrator's identity by the court and has requested damages on behalf of the victim. In addition, the individual was ordered to delete all instances of insulting and slanderous remarks. Sega states it considers acts of harassment against employees to be a serious human right issue that damages the dignity of employees and deteriorates the work environment. Thus, the company intends to continue to take action against any malicious behavior towards employees. While most companies generally have similar policies to Sega, it's not so common to see anyone put this into action or speak about it publicly. It has earned Sega some praise in online circles, as well as from the industry. Now, I guess my question is... Oh, hold on, there's a little more. Game developer Taira Nakamura has commented, Harassment is something I also suffered with when I was in the position of producer. It's so reassuring to see a company take action in this way and talk about it publicly to deter others from committing acts of harassment. So I guess this is in Japan that this happened. So I guess the Japanese government is actually a lot more strict about this stuff than the American government. Because in America, literally everyone says whatever they want and gets away with it. Seriously, everyone just gets away with it. Now, in, in this case, it sounds like whatever this harassment that was going on was so extreme that Sega, the company, actually spent money to go to court and say... Look at all this evidence of defamation and slander and harassment. This needs to end. And the courts in Japan granted them the right to get the person's identity and to actually have legal recourse against them. Do you understand how crazy this would be if this happened in the United States? Do you understand that half of YouTube would just disappear? Because so many channels are just this fucking rumor mill, gossip, bullshit completely making you know defamatory statements about people constantly i mean ha half the content would be gone because everyone would be legally liable for what they're saying and doing on youtube you know what i'm saying now i don't know if that would happen here because of course people would always argue about first amendment and what's right and what's wrong however we do have defamation and slander laws here in the united states i just think that they're very they're probably very different from what's in japan it sounds like in Japan, this was almost like an open and shut case, but in Japan, no one really does anything about it, but this was so extreme that the company finally did. But here in the USA, I guess you would have to prove in court, right? That someone was intentionally making things up. There's a difference between your right to say something, but you don't have a right to lie. You understand? Like, for example, what went on with Alex Jones... And the whole deal with him saying that the Sandy Hook massacre many years ago, a school shooting, was fake. And that, according to him, it was all orchestrated and everyone was an actor. And it was, you know, very awful things to say with zero evidence because he never had any evidence of it. He made it up just to get attention on his show. So he was sued massively and lost. And now... For the last five years, he's been attempting to move and hide all of his financial assets to, so that he doesn't have to pay the victims. I know that sounds awful because it is, but yeah. So basically, you can't just say and do whatever you want. Or you can, but you have to face legal repercussions. You can say an opinion. Like you can say, I don't like something or I disagree with something. That you can do. But you literally cannot just make up fake statements and throw them out there on the internet as fact and act like you're protected endlessly. So I guess that's what it sounds like happened here. This person was outright saying awful things about someone at Sega that weren't true. They were just making them up and Sega had enough. So yeah, you have the right, if that's the case, even in the United States with the First Amendment, you still have the right to go after someone 
in court if you feel like someone's constantly making these just outright lies about stuff. Okay? Anyway. Um, so, I'm curious. I am. I'm curious what will happen. Because will there be other companies who will now see this online harassment and say, no, this will not stand. We have to end this. We have to make sure that, you know, people don't keep acting this way. If Sega started the movement, we need to continue it. Right? I don't know. Um, I mean, I can't imagine what was said and done here that actually made the company take action. Could you imagine what they said? What heinous stuff must have been said? Right? Jeez. So, anyway. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. One other thing that just happened, and this I don't understand. Maybe many of you, because I actually have a more of an international fan base than I have domestic. I have a 48% American viewer base, but 52% of you are outside the U.S. Just listen to this story. Sony has updated their prices for PlayStation Network in Turkey. It's a major price hike. For some reason, new games digitally on PlayStation Network in Turkey will now cost $85. The same exact games on Xbox or PC are costing $25 to $30 less. But this is apparently a thing in Turkey. For some reason, Sony stuff is more expensive in Turkey. Why? Why would you pay $25 to $30 more for exactly the same game just because it's on PlayStation, right? I, that's confusing me. But I hear this all the time. I, I hear people come in to my chat and they're like, yeah, I wanted to get this game, but it's like in my country, it's like $95. And I'd be like, what? Why is it $95 where you live? Shouldn't the pricing be adjusted for where you live and be, shouldn't it be equal around the globe? But apparently not, right? Apparently internationally things cost differently depending on where you live. And I'm just curious if anyone here in chat has a story that, yeah, they've experienced a huge price discrepancy where they live for some odd reason with gaming. Like maybe Game Pass costs more or PlayStation uh, Plus costs more or maybe, again, these digital games, maybe they just cost, cost more for some reason, right? Some people are saying uh, perhaps it has something to do with tariffs. Like, certain countries have certain embargoes or tariffs on certain commerce from other countries. So maybe in Turkey, they really don't like Japanese companies or something. So they impose a, a hefty tariff on it. I don't know. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really understand it. 672, you don't live in Wakanda. Wake up. I think you live in Wakanda. You wish you lived in Wakanda. You don't live in Wakanda. <laughs> he says in Wakanda it costs hundred dollars for Xbox Live. You don't live in Wakanda. Anyway, uh, so anyway, I'm curious about that. Like, does anyone know of big price discrepancies in in different regions? Because I'll be honest, like that could actually push someone to like, why would you continue to buy Sony products if you can get the same exact game that performs? pretty close on PC or even on Xbox. I say even on Xbox because probably you go to the gaming PC next and then maybe Xbox third this console gen because let's be honest, Xbox ain't doing so good this console gen, which sucks. I feel like it's a great console and everything, but I don't know. It's just, they're really losing the war here. Um, so yeah. Uh, I forget who it is. Isn't it Mark? I think it's Mark who says in Australia, everything is way more expensive for some odd reason. And I always wonder why in Australia would games be way more expensive, right? Like, why? what's with the premium price added to gaming? Because it just makes gaming a more expensive hobby then. If the same exact games are costing more in a different country for no good reason, right? No, see, I don't, I don't believe that. Someone just said, it's converted to their local currency. There's no difference in monetary value. That's not true. I just literally said, you can buy exactly the same game, all right, on PlayStation 5, PC, and Xbox in Turkey, and it's $25 to $30 cheaper for the same game on Xbox and PC. It's that much more expensive to buy the PS5 version, but it's the same game. This has nothing to do with the currency in the country. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand why only Sony would be the odd one out in this situation. That's what's confusing me. 
And I'm sure that's true. Someone just said, that's why people pirate games. You may be right. That may be what urges people instead of buying to pirate because why are you going to pay so much extra? It's not like there's added value. You're getting exactly the same game. There's no added value. So why are you paying $30 more, right? Okay, I just got reminded to go check my wash. I will. I'll be right back. All right. Well, thank you to Casanova for reminding me to check. Uneven load again. So I had to go in. I had to lift up the entire mattress pad out of the washer. It weighed like 10 pounds because it was completely soaked with water. And I had to try to basically pull it out, rotate it in my arms, and put it back in in a different position because it was like a giant lump of water. As I did this, I'm not kidding, like a gallon of water poured out of it all over the floor of the laundry room. Luckily, we have linoleum in there. So it just made a giant fucking mess everywhere. I put it back in. I did go it. It did start again, and it's not uneven load this time. So I think this time it will finish. But now I got to go down in another 15 minutes when it's done spin cycle and finishing, and I got to put it in the dryer. So I stayed there. I had to get paper towels, and I'm freaking drying the entire area. The entire, my entire floor is soaked like a lake of water that came out of this thing when I lifted it up. Like, oh my god. Not cut out for this. <laughs> no, in truth, I am. I just, I, I, if I was down there, right, waiting for it to say uneven load, I could go right over and do it easily, but I'm up here. You know, I'm basically doing two things at once. <laughs> uh. You're not supposed to have that much in there. Dude, there's the mattress pad and the sheets and the pillowcase. It's one set of bedding in a washer. Yes, you're supposed to have that in there. It's not like I have a comforter, a blanket, the sheets, pillows, pillowcases, and the mattress pad in there at once. I just have the basic stuff for the bed in there. Anyway. All right. Well, anyway, by the way, guys, that is it for the news today. Good Lord. Let's, uh, let's jump into shout out, shall we? All right. Well, we have one contribution so far. Okay. No, there is no comforter and there are no towels in that washer. Al Gore, you are a liar. Anyway. Changing your TV input label from game mode to PC can improve input speed dramatically more than game mode. It made a huge difference for me. My TV does not have a PC mode. This is a $1.57 tipper. Yeah, my, my TV doesn't have a PC mode. My TV is, is built for, if you're going to game, put it on game mode. Uh, I looked into it. It's a, it's, you know, it's a really good Sony TV. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what I got it on. So I've got the best right now. Like I said, when I'm playing Street Fighter Six and I'm in training mode, and I just stand there and I go, button, it immediately gives me the input. Like, there's, like, like pretty much no delay at all. And there used to be a significant input, and now there's almost no delay at all. So. Okay, well, guys, I'm done talking about the stuff I had to talk about today. I got to go downstairs in 15 more minutes and put that into, in the dryer. Uh, Want to do some Q&A? Oh. Mark says... I bought the Season 2 Ultimate Character Pass. Cool. I mean, so did I. You're talking about Street Fighter 6, right? Yeah, I did too. That's how I ended up getting more music and stuff. And apparently when the new stage comes out, I should get it without having to unlock it with Drive Ticket. Captain DCW, good to see ya. He says, sorry, I haven't been around for a few days. I've been playing the new college football game. That's cool. I heard a lot of people are really enjoying this new college football game. Why? Because it's an actual new game from the ground up. It's not, oh, Madden, where they just reskin it every year. Apparently it plays differently, and a lot of people really like the game. I'm glad to hear that. I don't care about sports games, you know, so I don't, I don't really, I'm, I'm not going to benefit from that, but I'm glad to hear that you guys are enjoying an American college football game uh, way more than Madden. What is the most effective type of battle bot in my opinion? Well, we've watched many seasons of it now, and every season it changes because every, every year someone tries to figure out like a new meta for it. Um, and so when it started... It was basically like anyone who either had a really powerful vertical spinner, which is essentially a blade that spins this way rather than this way, which is horizontal. It spins vertically like this. And basically when it hits you, it tries to lift you. So at first it was either that or it was someone who had like the biggest weapon. So there was like this guy called Tombstone who had a weapon that would spin this. It was a ginormous blade. 
So he would just drive it right into you and clobber you, and that was it. Like, you didn't have any defense against it. But what's happened is over the years, the meta changed. And so Tombstone actually stopped doing so well, and other people started developing other kinds of bots that could counter that. Now some of the some of the more interesting bots are the like there's a crazy flipper bot where it's so low to the ground blades won't even hit it they just miss and he just goes under you and flips you way into the sky right so yeah it's changed over the years I don't know I haven't gotten to the, the latest season I think we're at least one or two seasons behind the latest season so I don't know what like the current meta is in battle bots um, and I think later this year they may actually be doing another season I'm not sure if it's later this year or early next year. Swago Nito says, uh, Swago Nito says, uh, the college football game is being made by a completely different developer, not anyone involved with Madden. Yeah, I think that's why people like it, right? See, back in the day, Madden was not the dominant game franchise for fight football. There was the 2K series, NFL 2K, and there was Madden, and there was like another one too. There was like, oh, game day, NFL game day was huge back in the day. So you had options every year. When you wanted to play a sports game, there was usually two or three different competitors who were all vying for the top spot for a particular sport. And then all of a sudden, Madden started completely dominating, and no one made American football games anymore. So I'm glad to see that someone else is trying to compete now. No, I've never had an avocado chocolate shake. That sounds a little weird. Yes, Bison has massive combo damage output. That's correct. Advice for someone who recently pulled their back? Uh, yes, uh, basically, man, it's rough. When you have a bad, bad back, it's very hard to relieve it because even if you're sitting down, it's still uncomfortable, especially if, like, you, uh, if you hurt a disc rather than just a muscle, that's the worst because, like, there's really no comfy spot. For me, when my disc was at its worst, I just had to find a way to negate the pain in my mind because it was just constant pain. It's like, dude, what do you do? You can't even think straight because you got fucking wincing pain every moment, you know? I would definitely say anti-inflammatories. NSAIDs, they call them. That's great. Those will help. <clears throat> Jasper, what are you doing? Please don't attack the wire. Hey, Jasper. Hey, Jasper Kitty. Why are you doing that to that wire? Don't do that. Here we go again. <laughs> How did I get a slipped disc? It wasn't slipped. It was severely herniated, and no one really knows. It's not like, oh, I got into a bad accident or something. It's just something that happened over time. And then all of a sudden, I started getting severe shooting pain up and down my legs, but it wasn't the same leg. Sometimes it would be one leg. Sometimes it was the other leg. So you know it has something to do with the disc. And it, you're right. Um, and then sometimes I got bad numbness where I'd try to walk and I couldn't even feel anything. It was like pins and needles or nothing. That's obviously not good. And then I started having like, uh, Jasper, don't bite that wire. I started having, um, what do you call it? Like spasms? Don't do that. Don't chew that wire. Stop that right now. Stop that now. Don't do that. Don't do it. I know it's a nice wire. It's a purple wire. It's my joystick wire. Don't chew it. Don't chew my $400 joystick wire, Jasper. Jeez. Jasper, I just said don't do that. Stop that right now. Not chew that, that wire. Leave it alone. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, no. Swago Nito says, do your fridge have an ice maker? Mine just broke. I don't know if it's worth it to get another fridge with an ice maker. This fridge that I have was brand new when I moved in 10 years ago. The ice maker literally never worked properly. That thing would constantly freeze up, constantly have issues to the point where I just turned it off. I had enough and I just bought an ice cube tray and I put it in my freezer and that's how I get ice. There is no point to having that thing. It never worked. It always would have issues. Shout out to Hair of the Dog. Thank you to Hair of the Dog for a super chat and thank you to Grimace for a super chat. Two super chats there. So, guys, as you know, when I stream, my goal is to hit 50 bucks in tips every stream. Outside of that, everything is appreciated. Super chats, memberships, gifted memberships, and tips. Now, today we're doing Street Fighter. 
I'm going to try to take breaks every few matches and sit here and, and have a conversation with you guys. I actually have been enjoying doing that a lot recently. And I find that when I break it up like that, I do better as opposed to just constantly play, play, play. All right. Then during those times is when I will do shout outs for contributions and the like. But if we were to hit the 50 bucks and tips earlier on, that would obviously allow me to just focus on the gameplay and not worry so much about performance of the stream and stuff like that. And uh, obviously, you know, to be focusing on the game is more beneficial than focusing on, you know, stupid financials. So if you like the content, if you're thinking of support it today, um, then please do. Okay, please do in some way. And if we hit that 50 bucks early, that would help a lot. JD, sure, we could do red and blue bison today. Sure, we can. And I will color my joystick red or blue to coincide with red or blue bison. How about that? Because my joystick is color changing now. This victory stick is so crazy. There you go. <clears throat> do I like Crash or Spyro more? Oh. Uh... Well, Crash came out first, correct? Crash was first. Spyro was second. I've played both trilogies. I think they're all they're all good games. Um, I think Crash is a little bit more basic, while Spyro had more to it. It felt like Spyro had a little bit more of the exploration factor to it, especially with the parts that you could fly and stuff. Um, but man, I like them both. That's a tough question, actually. You know, I don't know if I really want to answer it because I haven't played them in so long. Maybe if I went back and played them again, I'd be like, oh, I definitely have an answer for you. But I just have fond memories of both. Although, let's be honest, both have some pretty challenging things. I think Crash 1 has some crazy challenging stuff, right? But, uh, man, I think they're both good. I don't think that I really want to pick. <laughs> how, is, how about Sly? Sly Cooper also is great. All those games, you know, the classic platformers from PS1, PS2 era are quite good. No, I never had any issue with my toes. Jay Stan says, my lower back hurts sometimes and my toes occasionally go numb during pain. Was that what you experienced? No, I never had any issues with my extremities. It was shooting pain down like from my sp lower spine through the back of my legs, either one. And it would be like nerve pain just shooting through. And the numbness would actually be in the leg and back there. So when I'm walking, I'm getting like pins and needles like in my legs. I never had, like, numbness in the toes. No, that did not happen to me. I'm wondering, numbness in toes? That could be a few things. That could be nerves. That could be, like, like blood circulation, right? Could be. That you're not getting enough circulation in your extremities. That could be a different thing. I don't know. Double M says, what's the future of the Elden Ring DLC moving forward? I'm not sure what you mean. We're playing it again on Saturday. We're taking on the boss. We'll see if we beat him. If we don't beat him, we'll play it again until we beat him, right? Like, I don't know how long it'll take. I'm not really in a rush. Honestly, I'm just not. Like, with Melania, it was like, oh, the ultimate challenge to beat her. How long will it take? With this boss, I don't even care. I'm just being honest. I'm like, oh, I know I'm going to beat him. It's going to come in time. I'm not going to stress out about it. It's not that big of a deal. Like, really, I, I don't really see it as a big deal. Oh, well, I'll beat him when, I get, when, I, when we figure it out. And I'll figure it out eventually. I just need to figure out his second half attacks and when to dodge and when to hit. That's all it is. Nintendo World Championships is out. I, oh, does it come out today? I thought it came out yesterday or uh, tomorrow, but that's cool. Hopefully it's good and people like it. Like I said, I'm considering getting it for my marathon uh, next week. Not this week coming up, but the week after. That's right, Jade. Anything You doing anything special for your birthday, Jade? Just curious. His birthday's this weekend. Doing anything fun? Does Jasper know any tricks? No, not really. He's a cat. Cats don't really do tricks. <laughs> Cats do silly things, but not really on command. You don't train a cat like you would train a dog. Oh, really? Double M says a lot of streamers have quit the DLC and said they will not go back to fighting Radon until he gets a nerf. If that's the point, why not just summon? It really, let's be honest here. If you get to this final, but you went through the whole DLC, you beat everything else. Now, I don't know if they did. Maybe they skipped the optional stuff too, right? Maybe they didn't fight Bale. Maybe they didn't fight the Lord of Flame. Maybe they just skipped all the tough stuff. But if you get to the end, 
right? Why not just summon and beat it, right? And I know that that's a crutch or whatever, but why not just summon and beat it? If it's not that big of a deal to you, right? Why not just summon and beat it and get it done? Unless you're saying they are summoning and they still can't beat him. I mean, if that's the case, holy shit. Damn. <laughs> if you're summoning, you still can't beat him. That's pretty bad. I know I can summon. I know I can summon. I don't... For me, I would much rather do it without summoning. I would much rather learn and beat him. If I did it with Melania, I think I could do it with him. And again, it's not like... I'm not feeling any pressure to do it at any rate, any speed. Like, I'll beat him when I beat him. Right? It's no big deal. Even if it takes me several streams to do it, I know I'll eventually do it. It's not... I'm not any under any pressure or... Like, there's no doubt in my mind that I'm going to do it. I know... I, it's just a matter of when. But, you know, I would like to do it without summoning. I would. Being that it is the final thing in Elden Ring. There's not going to be anything else. They've already said this is it. This DLC is it. The last hurrah. You know, they might make a sequel. I would bet they are going to make a sequel. With how much money this made. Um, but since it is the last hurrah thing in Elden Ring, I would like to beat it without summons. What else would you guys like to talk about today? Any other topics? I gotta go downstairs and check on my wash again in like five minutes. <laughs> oh, what a day it's gonna be, man. What a day for me. Having to go check on the wash constantly. You're going to go to the mall, but then you're going to be home watching me. Well, Jade, remember, I am doing Elden Ring and Riven on sun Saturday. So I don't know if it's really anything you're going to be too interested in. Uh, Friday night is Friday night fights and maybe a lobby with Brian. Not confirmed yet. Got to confirm that before I promise that to you guys. But it's, it's, a, it's a maybe. We definitely want to do another lobby. Did he? He was saying it took Kai Senat. I don't know how to say his name. 99 hours to beat it. I don't believe he played it 99 hours. I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't believe that at all. He played 99 hours. I think you've made that up. <laughs> uh, Okie dokie. You really think I care about this? And by the way, I I'll okay, I'll say it. I'm gonna I'm just gonna address this once. I don't ever want to bring it up again. Boogie got canned from the Lalkal podcast for lying about having cancer for two years. Then Kim admitted DSP was right and that Boogie would be ruined by the Lalkal podcast. Okay, I'm just going to say this, all right? Just the fact that you know that, you fell for the trap. You understand that? This is what they want. The whole idea of the show is drama. They have baited you into drama. You're talking about their show on my stream. I'm not part of their show. I don't want to be part of their show. I want nothing to do with them whatsoever. I don't want to be associated with them. I don't want them talked about in my content. Nothing. Here you are on my channel talking about it. You have fallen for exactly what they wanted you to fall for. Right now, you are doing exactly what Keem wants you to do. Do you not understand that? How could you be so baited so easily? You made, he just made you look like a fool. Do you understand that? Any moment you bring these people up, you have been played for a fool. Because at any moment, they will do anything for attention. They could easily bring Boogie back. Oh, well, we changed our mind. He's back now. Drama. Oh, now we don't like him again. He's gone again. Drama. Do you, how do you not understand this? Like, this is such an easy formula to understand. I don't know how people fall for it on a daily basis. I don't know why there's a single person who ever would have watched that show. And I don't know how anyone could take anyone who ever appeared on that show seriously. Why would you ever want to appear on that show? You're a joke. You're a clown. 
You're saying outright, all I care about is drama on the internet if you appear on that show. So why the fuck would you care about it and why would you have ever watched it, right? The fact that you bring it up in my chat now, you've got me, you know, me wasting time. So stop. I'm just going to try to be, like, make this as, as clear as possible to everyone. There is a no drama rule in my streams and content. It says it right in there. Do not bring up outside detractor content. Do not bring up drama content. It has nothing to do with me. You are completely derailing and wasting everyone's time. Shut up about it. Don't bring it up here. I'm not going to talk about it. This is why I wanted to say it now. So I'm saying my piece, okay? I don't care about Boogie. I don't care about Keemstar. I don't care about Wings. I don't care about the Lol Cow podcast or any of the fucking clowns that are on that fucking show ever. It's trash content for trash people. People who are dumb and like drama. I don't like drama because I'm not dumb. I'm 42 years old. I got more going on in my life than a bunch of fucking stupid did you hear this rumor did you hear this gossip did you hear this drama oh this guy did this oh this guy did that you're fired you're back you're fired you're back what are you five years old grow the fuck up and stop watching that trash okay and for god's sakes stop bringing it up on my content i don't care there we go that super street fighter 2 turbo player did a super chat and says I like your streams, but you're doing chores on your stream. This is no good. Yeah, it's called life, dude. It's called life. It's what you got to do. I'm multitasking right now. So, in fact, now is the time. Let me head downstairs and see if I got to toss that stuff into the dryer. Okay. The bedding is in the dryer. Now it has to run for an hour, and then we're good. But it could stay in the dryer till later, and then my wife and I will probably put it on the bed together later today. Oh, man, laundry can be pretty stressful, huh? At least it's, it's done now. All right. Any any other topics you guys want to talk about uh, before we get set up and ready for Street Fighter? Do I prefer Chipotle or Moe's? I don't know what Moe's is. And Chipotle, uh, I, I've only had like twice. I thought it was okay. Seriously? He played the final boss for 100 hours. This guy, Kat... How do you say his name? Kat Sinai? Sene, I don't know how to say his name at all. Oh, Kai, Kai Senat, Kai Senat, Kai Senate. How do you say his name? Kai Senat. Oh, Kai Senat. Thank you, Kai Senat. Is that his real name? He uses his actual real name as a streamer. Kind of a rarity to use your full real name these days. Well, damn. Y you know what? That's dedication, dude. A hundred hours. Good shit for him for finally doing it. Congrats to him. I'm sure he had five billion viewers and made seventeen billion dollars doing it. <laughs> right? For me, I'll beat him. And everyone will be like, "What happened? I wasn't paying attention." Right? Everyone be like, "What happened? Oh, I farted." Sorry. Okay, how exciting. Oh, you should get a checkup. If you're having issues getting numbness in your extremities, you absolutely should get a checkup. You could you could have a blood clot forming. You could. You could have a blood clot forming and not, you know, that's a bad sign. Absolutely, you should. If you have... Any kind of pain and numbness, and it's chronic, meaning it's not just a one-off thing and goes away, but if, it, if it's repeating itself, you should see a doctor for sure. Okay, well, I ever hit 1,600 ranking points with Bison. Well, we were close. We were at 7, uh, 1,583. I think we were 1,583 was the highest I had, but then I lost a few. But that's what I mean. It's back and forth. You know, with Street Fighter, it's always like back and forth like that. Mm -mm. I have no idea. People are like, what makes Kai Sanat so special? I literally have no idea. I've never seen the person uh, stream. I've never seen any of their content. So I have no clue. I don't even know what the style is that they do. I <laughs> No idea. See you tonight there.
<laughs> Do I know who Boris Johnson is? Yeah, he's a politician in the UK, right? Well, didn't, didn't around the time of Trump and his success, didn't he also get elected in over there? And they almost look the same, like they're very similar look and demeanor. Bone Killer, 38 months as a member. Thanks. He says, uh, would you replay Dante's Inferno? Uh, you know, it's funny. I'm watching my playthrough now. I told you, told you, I think the game is fine. It's good. Like, the graphics for the time were good. The gameplay elements seemed fun. Like, I'm not seeing anything about Dante's Inferno that I'm like, oh, I don't like it. Like, I actually think I like the game. So, you know, would I replay it? I would, I mean, would I, I would consider it. I don't know if anyone would care about that in the modern day, though. Like, who cares about Dante's Inferno? In 2024, probably no, right? So, so I don't know if it warrants another playthrough, but it's a, it looks like a fine game to me. <clears throat> sure, you could do that, Casanova. For the React show, funny compilation would be fine for the show. Absolutely. All right. I think it's time to end the show, everybody. I want to say thanks for chilling. For the few who contributed, thank you. Uh, we're going to get into Street Fighter now. We're going to start with casual play. Although, as you've seen, there have been a lot of issues finding casual play matches because I think Capcom really screwed up casual play in Street Fighter VI. It, it tries to find people of skill level. Why? The whole idea of casual play is that Everyone has an equal chance to fight anyone else. You could be at the top of the mountain or the very bottom, any skill level whatsoever. It's just supposed to be practice. It's not supposed to be super serious. So I wouldn't mind playing someone who's a bronze because it at least gives me an opportunity to do combos and timing in an online setting. I don't know why it's trying to find master matches only for me in casual play. It's just stupid. I don't even want to be always fighting master ma you know, people. I want maybe a some, let me try this new thing. Let me try this other thing. Can't do that if someone's just doing their stupid pattern, their online fucking flowchart, you know? So I would hope that today we'll have some better luck with the casual play before we jump into the rank. I guess we'll see, right? Uh, 672, 38 months as a member as well. You see service gaming increasing next console, Jan. You mean games as a service gaming? I think every company wants to do it. But because now there have been so many failed ones, they're going to have to go back to the drawing board on how to make it work. Because I think they realize not every Games as a Service formula works anymore. Suicide Squad was like, that was it. That was the tipping point. When that one flopped so hard, they realized, oh shit, we got to do something different. <clears throat> okay, guys. Thanks for a great show. Tomorrow, hopefully, I'll have some good news about how Street Fighter went. And also... Some more developments in Stardew, chill, right? Have a good one. See you tomorrow, and peace out.